we're going to get started in just a second, but I wanted to uh, preface preface this with a few things. So this is an anti-disease class. When we are, our body is not at ease, it's disease. That's what happens with disease. And so this is anti-obesity and anti-inflammatory and anti-disease and anti-cancer. And the list goes on and on and on uh, because everything that we do in terms of our dietary habits and our lifestyle uh, really affect all of those things. You know, what we put on the end of our fork can either cause disease or it can prevent disease. What we do in our lifestyle or don't do in our lifestyle can either cause disease or prevent disease. And we know how important exercise is, especially just, you know, this past year, there was another study done on how it's actually, um, you know, when we exercise, it not only helps boost our immune system and uh, do so many wonderful things, uh, you know, improve our cardiovascular system and all of that stuff, but also they found that the lactic acid actually is helpful in preventing cancer. And there, the list goes on and on and on and on. And we'll give you some resources too at the end of this, like the China study that you should be uh, looking at and reading up on uh, because there's so much information on how our diet affects our health and particularly uh, turning on and turning off cancer cells. Now, what we're talking about today is you being your own health advocate, you taking control of your health. And not only is it good to be involved in your own health care it's essential, you guys, it's essential that you are your own health advocate. And I know we have many people here who are cancer survivors, cancer thrivers, people who, you know, have different disease or whatever, but really, you know, no matter what spectrum you're on here, it's all the same. And my passion, because obviously, you know, that um, I lost my sister to breast cancer, but, you know, also I know as a nurse that we can change our health. We can prevent and reverse disease through our dietary habits and lifestyle. But we live in a world where the insurance company and the big farms are in charge. The pharmaceutical companies are in charge. Now, I'm not against pharmaceuticals. We do need them at times. I'm not even opposed to chemotherapy or anything like that. Obviously, you know, each situation is different. Today, you're going to hear um, Chef Jen's, I like to call her Chef, Chef Jen's, um, you know, story here. And let me just let some people in here. Okay. And I, I you know, she's been on my podcast and on, on my show, but, you know, she's going to be talking about her journey um, with, you know, her, her, fight and battle with, with cancer. But again, I don't want you to get the message that we are against medication or chemotherapy or treatment or doctors or nurses. I'm, I am one. My daughter's a doctor. We have doctors on here. Uh, we, we, are, we are obviously uh, trying to give you options on what is out there, because sometimes we don't get those options, unfortunately. We're not told those options. And we're not even told that if you have high blood pressure or high cholesterol, sometimes we're not even told you need to change your diet, right? I keep letting people in here, so bear with me here. Um, and so, you know, those are things that we want to stress today. Your lifestyle habits and your dietary habits matter. They matter. They can help prevent disease and even reverse disease. And I wish I would have known now, or back then, what I know now. I know Jen's uh, saying the same thing. You know, had we known then what we know now, a lot of things would have been different. Um, I do want to say that, you know, at the end, I will tell you how to get a hold of Chef Jen because she does do cooking. She is a culinary chef by trade. And so uh, she'll tell you about that, but she does come to people's houses. She came to my house and cooked an amazing meal. She's done it for uh, my patients and all of that. And so we are also going to be offering um, a short anti-cancer class in 
the first quarter of the new year. Along with Anne Marie and I, we have our, our next upcoming classes for the new year coming aside from the anti-cancer class. But this isn't just anti-cancer, as I said, it's anti-disease. So without further ado, I wanna turn it over to Jen and she's gonna tell you about herself and about her why and her story, which is pretty remarkable. So Chef Jen, I'm gonna, hold on, I gotta, I gotta unmute you, hold on. Hello guys. There you go. Thank you for signing up for this. I think it will be life-changing to all of you in some small way. I'm gonna teach you some things um, in terms of prevention or taking care of yourself after a disease has happened. And I'm gonna tell you my story and why I'm so passionate about this. Um, when I was 29 years old, I was diagnosed with stage four small intestine cancer. And I was on my deathbed and I needed to turn my life around. And there was only so much that conventional medicine could do for me. So I needed to research and take my life into my hands. And I learned so much in the past two years. I was diagnosed two years ago and I haven't stopped learning since then. And it is my mission now to help everybody else out there because I don't want you to go through the suffering that I did nor that Robbie did. Seeing a family member pass away from cancer is terrible. And um, we're all here to help each other or to help someone we know. So um, I just wanna start by saying that I have a lot to talk about, about cancer, but I do believe that any disease, any problem that we're all facing in our body, it's all kind of related in terms of diet and exercise and our lifestyle. And um, so all the advice that I'm offering today based on what I did to heal from cancer, I believe is universal and we could all use these tips for our own bodies and for our own health. Um, so what happened was um, in my early childhood, I was just um, very unhealthy. Honestly, I lived on processed foods and I had a lot of childhood trauma. Uh, I bottled everything up. I um, lived on hot dogs, potato chips and mac and cheese. And when I was 16 years old, that's when my body started crying for help. I had some severe gut inflammation and it would make me have to stay home from school, lay in bed, wincing in pain. Um, eventually I would throw up, feel better and recuperate over the next 24 hours or so and get on with my life. And I never understood, maybe I should change the way I'm eating or, or anything, change anything about my lifestyle. I just kept doing the same things and I didn't have anybody to help me. So fast forward to age 29, um, I gave birth to my son. I was still having those bouts of inflammation, but I was just going with the flow. I didn't really know what to do. Um, but after I gave birth to my son, I started to really, really decline. Things um, were just be becoming so much worse that I was bedridden. And um, Throughout my whole childhood, I was seeing gastroenterologists and they just didn't really know what was wrong with me. I kept getting diagnosed with irritable bowel disease and, um, or I'm sorry, irritable bowel syndrome at first. But then at age 29, when I was bedridden, um, the doctors decided let's call it irritable bowel disease in terms of let's call it Crohn's disease. So um, I started on medications called. Um, Stellara and Humira, which are biologic immunosuppressives, meaning you, you're suppressing your immune system so that your body stops attacking whatever it's attacking. In my case, it might have been my gut lining because I had a lot of ulcerations and fluid buildup and scar tissue. Um, so um, I also started on really high doses of prednisone and um, none of that was working. 
So I went back to the doctor um, and he said, let's just stay on these medications and give them about a year to work. And um, in that year, I was dying. I weighed 90 pounds. I was so bloated that I looked six months pregnant. And um, I was, at this point, I was on um, at home on these IV nutrition bags because I just couldn't keep anything down. And um, I was kind of on like a watch and wait in terms of let the medications kick in so that we can finally get her back to health. The problem was the, ne the medications never kicked in. So um, I started meeting up with a surgeon and I, I asked him, I said, can you just please cut out my diseased intestine? And he turned me away. He said, no, um, the problem is once we cut out that part of your intestine, your immune system's just going to attack another part of your intestine. So let the medications do their job. Um, I was so desperate and I knew I was dying. I truly did. So I started seeking other surgeons opinions and um, they turned me away and they said, drink Ensure drinks or boost drinks um, from the grocery store to keep on weight um, and just let the medications do their job. So um, at that time, I was also going to the hospital for routine CT scans to monitor my Crohn's disease, scar tissue blockage. And at one point, um, I went in for a routine scan. I was so sick. I could hardly drink the, the drink they make you drink for a CT scan. Um, I was so close to throwing it up because it just wouldn't go down. And um, I had my CT scan done and the radiologist called me back right away. He said, you need to come look at this. And I knew that wasn't good. So I went back to his office in tears. I was so upset. I said, I know what, what he's about to say isn't good. And he said, look at this. And he showed me my intestines. And he, he said, there's a grapefruit size mass. That's the scar tissue. It's completely blocking your small intestine. Now we need to get a surgeon to remove that. So um, I got admitted to the hospital and the surgeon who turned me away was my surgeon. He, uh, he cut the mass out of me and I asked him, I said, will you please take a picture of what's been bothering me for 14 years? I want to see what it looks like. Um, so he cut it out and I saw this mass. My intestines were black and blue and insanely swollen. They're only supposed to be this big, you know, mine was this swollen. So um, at that point, I was in the hospital recovering from the surgery. I thought it was all over. I was so happy that that part was removed from me. I said, I can move forward. This is so exciting. I'm going to get my life back. And about a week into my hospital stay, my surgeon came in and he said, we need to talk. It's cancer. And then he asked me to recall the past 14 years and what went wrong and what the doctors missed. And, and um, I basically blacked out from, from fear. Um, hearing the word cancer was so scary to me. I just spent the past probably like two years before that studying autoimmune diseases and reading about autoimmune diets. And, and I knew nothing about cancer. All I knew was that people die from cancer or they die from the treatment. I was terrified. Um, I was terrified to tell my husband because I, I didn't want to have him watch me die. It was um, so scary. And my son was six months old at the time. And I said, um, why did I have children? He's gonna be motherless. And I was just so upset. So um, at that point, I felt like, there's a term called conveyor belt medicine where you get diagnosed with cancer, you get assigned an oncologist, they give you, you know, what they think, six to eight months of chemotherapy. Do you get radiation or not? Do you get more surgeries? But that's really all they offer. Um, so I'm laying in my hospital bed, my oncologist and his team come in, they say, okay, 
you're going to have six months of this type of chemotherapy, and then we're going to reevaluate. We're going to send you home with a backpack that you're going to wear with the chemotherapy treatment. Here's some of the side effects, but don't worry, it's going to be okay. And um, by the way, they said this treatment, this chemotherapy, only will give you an extra 2% chance of surviving five years. What I was terrified to ask and ended up just Googling was that my type of cancer at stage four was only a 20 month survival rate. So I knew I didn't have a lot of time, um, but I also didn't know anything about cancer or cancer treatment. So I was ready to sign up for chemotherapy and just give it a shot, even though there was only that 2% chance hanging over me. Um, and that's when my best friend, who is a little more holistic and alternative, walked right into my hotel room with a DVD player and this massive DVD set called The Truth About Cancer. And I watched it with my husband. And I kid you not, it, it has over 20 other treatment options from around the world. Um, with, and most of them are banned in the U.S., Nobody talks about these things. Nobody knows about these things. Um, and that's when I started to calm down. I said, you know, there's so many things I can try. How could I, how could I die? I think um, I'm gonna give this a shot. So I turned down chemotherapy, even though the resident doctors, my surgeon, everyone was like brought to tears by that. They were like, looking at me like, oh my God, you are going to die. And um, I was terrified. I had never been assertive in my life about, especially to like the medical community by telling someone no to something that was like a big first for me. Um, and I, I, to be honest, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know if it would work. I just had to have faith. When you're on your deathbed, you just have to pray about it. There's no other option. So um, eventually I got released from the hospital. I went home and I just took that Truth About Cancer documentary series to heart and I watched it over and over again. And um, the, the biggest thing that stood out to me was changing your diet. There's so many doctors who talk about going on a whole food plant-based diet, but also just, not even that, just eat fruits and vegetables in massive quantities because the phytochemicals or phytonutrients or compounds in those, they all halt cancer growth, which blew my mind. And it was so exciting because it's so accessible. We can all go to Wegmans or Whole Foods and grab pomegranates and grapefruits and salad greens. That that we can do. And not to mention, we do have to eat every day. So it's, it's something that we need anyways. So why not just try to eat a little healthier to save your life? Um, so that's what I did. I changed my diet. And um, I started a couple other treatments featured in the truth about cancer. And um, I went a whole year without cancer, which, which was amazing in itself. Then the cancer came back and I realized that I needed to buckle down a little more. And I started watching YouTube videos um, with whole food plant-based pioneers. And I was watching Rich Roll, who is a man who changed his life around with his diet and lifestyle. And he interviews people all the time. And he was interviewing someone on water fasting, which is when you go somewhere that's medically supervised and you just fast on water for a very long period of time. So I did that. Um, I went somewhere in Ohio, that's three hours away from Buffalo. And I fasted on water for 11 days and I loved it. And it felt so healing on so many levels, not just physically, but emotionally and mentally. It's very hard to do. And after that, that was like the catalyst to just keep trying new things. Um, and 
And that's that that was all I did. I just kept adding new things very slowly because I'm not the type to change my life like that. I needed to build and build and build. Um, and as I was changing my life with alternative treatments, I stayed in contact with my conventional doctors. And the turning point for me was um, after my second reoccurrence, a doctor looked at me and he said, you're not going to make it six months. This, this is bad. And I walked out of there crying and I just said, watch me, I will do it. And um, I haven't talked to that doctor since, but it's been over a year. So, so I feel so confident that if I just keep going, I'm going to be completely out of the clear. Um, and in that time, I've hired a, a you know, like a nutritionist with Robbie, um, a physical therapist, a personal trainer, a mental health therapist. I've had many doctors, but I will say my absolute favorite doctor is someone that I found out from Robbie. So that's a really big deal to me. Um, I almost searched for two years to find someone who I could trust to handle my cancer care. And I finally just found someone and it feels so good. Um, so that's all, that's my story is uh, just keep pushing through here and uh, it's been two years and I'm still here. So I only had 20 months to live and um, I changed everything about my life and I'm here today to help you guys. We love that. We're so grateful that you shared your story, uh, Jen, and also that you're doing well right now and you look amazing. I know you sent me a picture of when you were ill and you don't even mm -hmm. look like the same person at all. Yeah. I mean, it was unrecognizable. Um, and so it's, it's just amazing how, how you have just taken the bull by the horns. Um, of course, I know your faith is, is so strong, um, in your faith life and also, you know, being your own health advocate. And, and so, you know, we, as I preface this in the beginning, um, you know, this was Jen's, story and she did ask some important questions which i give to my clients too if you're going to a chemotherapist or you're going to your doctor uh you're going to whatever doctor you're going to here's some questions that you need to ask and one of the things that you need to ask if they are you know recommending treatment of whatever kind you know side effects but also what is the percent of success for it. it, you know, and so for Jen, she made the decision because it was only 2% chance of survival for five years. She, she made the chance, uh, the choice to do something else. My sister did experimental treatments um, and they prolonged her life. You know, my sister was given only a couple of, uh, a short time to live, just a couple of months. And she ended up living 10 years. She you know, took a different route. I think what the message is here is you have to ask questions. You have to do your own research. You have to be in it to win it. You have to, you know, go for the fight and realize, unfortunately, what we don't hear is that our dietary habits, our environment, and our lifestyle can either cause disease or prevent disease. And, and, that's like pillar one, right? It's like pillar one. That's like ground zero, that first. And, and so, um, Jen, you know, I'm just so grateful that you have this heart to share with other people and to help other people, both through being a culinary chef now and teaching nutritious meals and going to people's houses. And I mean, she, she's just amazing in which the knowledge that she knows and, and just what she makes. Um, but also, you know, that, that you're willing to share the story because I know it's hard. I get choked up every time <laughs> you get choked up and you say it. Um, but you've learned a lot and I don't think it's a coincidence. Like I know it's not a coincidence that, that you and I met because she had told the story earlier, how she was at the library and my book was sticking out and that's how she ended up grabbing my book and contacting me because we didn't know each other. Um, but there are reasons why people cross our paths. 
And you could be helping somebody right now, I'm sure you are, that is listening and saying, you know what? Watch me, right? Watch me. I am going to do whatever it takes to be well. And I want to say that, you know, there was one thing that um, I think you guys have heard this story, but when I took my sister to all these world-class hospitals and they all said to go home and get your affairs in order, there was one doctor at Sloan Kettering Hospital that looked at my sister and said, you're not dying, live. You're, she said, you're not dying, you're living, so live. And my sister's face just brightened up and she's like, I'm living, I, I have to live. And guys, we're all, I mean, we're all dying, right? At some point. So we're living right now. We need to live life to its fullest and live that abundant life that God desires for us. He's given us the food of the earth to fuel and feed our body. And you know all of the stuff that I always say, but, you know, I just am so grateful that those of you that are listening, we've had over 75 people uh, that will be listening to this uh, that registered. I just am so grateful that you care enough about your health to try and get as much information as you can, whether you have gone through anything or not, we all should be our own health advocate. So let me pray for everyone here if I can too. And I just want to mention that, um, you know, I know a lot of people have asked what treatments Jen has done and everything. And we'll, we'll um, you know, post her information uh, when Anne Marie sends out the uh, link for this recording. We can post your information, Jen, so they can get a hold of you for culinary reasons or, you know, if they have questions. But we will be doing uh, something uh, in the future too, so that she goes a little bit more in detail. And I will take some questions in just a minute too, but I just want to pray for everybody first. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you for everyone who is on this call, who will be listening to this call, Lord. Um, and I thank you for Jen. I thank you for her heart. I thank you that you're healing her body. And those, I know there's several people that are um, needing healing right now, Lord. I just ask that you pour your Holy Spirit over them. Lord, heal their body. Uh and give them peace that surpasses all understanding that you've got it, that you go before them, that you go beside them, that you go behind them and you surround them. And Lord, um, that we should not fear that you are ultimately sovereign and you are ultimately, you know, the day and the hour, uh, but we still have a responsibility to take care of this temporary earth suit, this temporary mobile home that you've given us. So I just ask you to pour your Holy spirit over everyone here. I don't know what's going on with people here, Lord, but you do, you do. And I just ask that you touch everyone who's listening and whatever, whatever's concerning them, Lord, you take it away, Lord. Um, and Lord, I just thank you. Thank you that we are able to have people like Jen that can share their story. And Lord, we ask you to, uh, to just bless us, bless our family and also uh, surround your angels to protect us, command your angels to protect us and put a hedge of protection around us this holiday season, which is so wonderful in you, Lord. And Lord, um, I just thank you that we have you to go to when we don't know where else to turn. We love you, we worship you, we praise you, and we thank you in Jesus' holy name, amen. Um, before we take any questions, I just wanna say a couple of things. Uh, the China study by Dr. Colin Campbell is amazing. Okay. Um, his son, Dr. Thomas Campbell is from the university of Rochester. Amazing, amazing book on how dairy is linked to breast cancer, how the, the consumption of animal products goes up in your body, the incidence of cancer goes up so we can turn on and turn off cancer cells. Radical remission. I interviewed Dr. Kelly Turner, who wrote the book, Radical Remission. It's nine key factors that can make a real difference in your life. And she interviewed thousands of people across the US, many of them in their last stages of cancer. And they all had nine things in common, those that lived. And of course, six of them were food related. Also, The Truth About Cancer, I have the whole series. Um, I have the book and the video series and the anti-cancer, I can't remember what it is by Dr. Um, 
I don't know, I got to think of it. Anne Marie will put it in the email, but there's a lot of resources out there. And the doctor that, doc, that Jen is talking about um, that I sent her to was, uh, doc, uh, he's a DO, Dr. Kaplan. Um, and he does an anti cancer treatment as well. But again, you know, this is. This is all about anti-dis-ease, not just anti-cancer. And uh, so also Chris Beat Cancer is a good series. And uh, you mentioned Rich Roll too. It's um, awesome stuff. Did you want to add anything else, Jen, before we take any, yeah. any questions? Yeah, I want to um, mention a couple of things. First, I want to <laughs> read a quote that's very powerful to me. Um, and this will relate to everyone here. The quote is, cancer is not the disease itself. It's just the tip of the iceberg that shows that you that there's so many underlying things because you have to be sick in order to develop, to develop cancer. You know you don't get cancer and then just get sick. Your body's already sick and compromised. Your immune system is weak, you're toxic, you're stressed out, that's how cancer develops. So it's displacing the myth and the fear that cancer is something that gets you. You're not a victim of it. You have a lot of control over it. And um, that's the quote. I just wanna say that I believe if there's any sort of symptoms in your body of inflammation or um, any type of disease that you can control that. And those are warning signs. You shouldn't suppress it. You have to fix it now because had I fixed my inflammation 14 years ago, I probably would not have gotten cancer later on in life. And um, I just kept putting it off and pushing it under the rug. And then cancer had to be that big, hello, wake up and fix your life. And um, I don't want that to happen to everybody here. So if there's some little issue with your body, get to the source of it now. It'll benefit you so much because it's going to cost you money regardless if you if you fix it now or if you want to pay thousands of dollars in medical bills and use your retirement fund or whatever it is later in life to fix that big thing that developed because you kept pushing little things under the rug. Um, it really pays off just to take charge now. And the other thing is, I so badly wanted to hand my problem to my doctor. But the truth is, your doctor can only do so much and they're not going to go home with you and watch what you're eating or what you're, how you're exercising. This is all on you. And it's so challenging to change your life, especially when you're under a lot of stress or maybe you're dying. So you need help. And don't rely on your spouse or anybody else to kick you in the butt. You have to do this yourself. And sometimes you need support in terms of a, a coach like Robbie or Anne Marie, maybe a chef like me. You need somebody to help you, probably that you're not related to because, because you can't just put your, your problems on someone else and expect them to help you. Um, I so badly wanted to do that. I wanted to. I wanted people to take care of me, but what I realized was nobody's gonna take care of you. You have to do it. You have to put in the work and it's so challenging. It's so hard to change your life, especially if you're maybe a food addict or you have so much trauma deep down in you and it's, it might take years of therapy to get it all out, but you can do it. And now look at you, you're taking my classes at the <laughs> gym. She looks amazing. I just posted a picture. I'm sure you're in it unless you were hiding. Oh yeah. Are you <laughs> in, in it? the back? <laughs> oh, you're in the back. You need to get in the front. Okay. <laughs> so um, thank you so much, Jen. Those are so encouraging. No matter what people are facing, you need to be your own health advocate. And it's not only good, it's essential to your health to, you know, work with your doctor, to uh, you know, research everything and really get to the root cause if you can, you know, obviously it's, we're talking about getting to the root cause, not just a pill for every ill, but really finding out, you know, if we can, uh, what is causing the issue. So are there any questions? 
if you don't want to ask it here, you can always email as well. I don't want to keep you guys too long because I know many of you are on lunch, but um, I just want to, again, thank everyone for, for joining us. Make sure you sign up for our newsletter at RobbieRaw.com because we have some new classes coming up in January. And also, again, uh, Jen is, Chef Jen is uh, going to be getting doing another seminar for us uh, on some of those treatments that she did. And, and there's so many of them. So yeah, they're wonderful stuff. So thank you so much, everyone. Go eat your salad, eat or drink your green salad every day. Okay. And drink your water, filtered water. <laughs> thank you, Jen, so much. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you.